thanks to Civic Tech for, for having us today. We're pretty excited to be here. Um, just going to start by saying I'm not feeling particularly well today, so uh, just bear with me um, in case I lose my way. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about civic engagement. We're going to talk a little bit about the app that we've built. But first, just a little bit of a story uh, to try to let you guys know who we are. Um, so first off, um, ooh, that's supposed to say that we're not. So we're not experts on politics or the law. <laughs> we're definitely not. Um, we're not UX, uh, user experience, user um, uh, interface, like researchers, but we are researchers. I have a background in psychology, music, audiology, hearing science. Mike has a very big focus on artificial intelligence. He's an expert in that field. Um, and we're both data scientists. We're also BFS. We've been uh, pals since we were kids. And we've been talking about science and interesting things uh, since we were kids. So I'll give a little bit of like an overview of our motivation for how we got here, uh, why we built uh, Vote Informer. And um, really, it comes from our own personal experience, chatting with friends, chatting with family uh, about contentious political issues. Um, and as you know, like in the polarized world, those conversations can be hard because people seem to have like a sports fan like allegiance to a particular political party. It doesn't always seem to be like very evidence based. Right. And those conversations usually have to do a lot with, you know, the personalities of a particular leader of a party or some vague notion of what a party does or doesn't support. Um, and we would come away from these conversations feeling like, damn, like, we're not sure if people are, when they vote during elections, are they actually voting in line with their own values and interests? Or are they sort of being duped? And then furthermore, we realize this about ourselves, like we don't actually know, right? Uh, and being data scientists, we thought, hey, like, we can easily just go find this information, it's publicly available. Uh, and that's true, but it's difficult to access. Right. Yeah, so we kind of um, have always wanted to work on something together um, and uh, our science lives have sort of been separated. Um, so we decided let's build this thing that we wish already existed. And um, in doing so, how can we address this issue of people making political alignment decisions? when access to info regarding those alignments uh, is challenging to sort of access. Um, there's a lot of talk and buzz around large language models, as I'm sure all of you know. Um, so we were thinking along the lines of having, you know, an actual really good practical use case for this. Um, we'll talk more about that later. Um, but can we make something in an evidence-informed perspective where users can identify their own political personal values through the app and then see how those align in the political landscape? And we wanted to do this in a way that was sort of grounded in some kind of like shared space of understanding. So voting records, we think, do that. So this is where we wanted to start and uh, see if we can find alignment through historical voting records. Um, when we first started, we had a sort of top-down approach being data scientists and geeks and talking about all these sorts of things. And we realized pretty quickly that just because we think MDS plots and 3D graphs are rad that other people probably don't necessarily share, share those same sentiments. So we built early versions of the product and kind of just, you know, got lashed back uh, in terms of, you know, what, what am I even looking at? I don't understand what this is. So we're humbled pretty quickly. And although people like the idea, they didn't really understand what we we're trying to show with the data. So we've sort of dug into this issue of civic engagement and access to information as really like a user interface, user experience problem. So we want to continue to find the balance between our vision, the sort of data heavy thing with, um, you know, research and input from potential users to try to develop an understanding of like what people want versus what we were trying to make in the first place. And that's been a really interesting process for us. So when we're building Vote Informer, we started with some like pretty strong priorities. I mean, the first thing we obviously want to be nonpartisan, right? We don't, we're not trying to convince anyone of any particular thing. 
uh, we want people to come to the app and learn what's important to them from their own perspective. Um, we also, it's important for us to be transparent about where we're getting our data. All the data we use is uh, publicly accessible. I mean, it's uh, legislation and how politicians voted on that legislation. So we want to be transparent, like give people access to the raw source uh, and just, you know, we're providing them hopefully some an easier way to access it um, in a way that uh, hopefully provides them some insight, right? And we're we're also trying to lean a little bit on on the science of surprise um, to give people an experience that's more memorable, right? That you might be surprised actually which politicians support which issues, and if you if our users experience that, um, they might be uh, you know uh, more able to. Uh, to come away with, with something they've actually learned. We should mention that um, what we've been working on so far is just at the federal level. Um, we have thoughts and things about that, which we may get into later. Um, so data collection. Whenever we started out with this, we were kind of building our low fidelity versions of the data analysis stuff. Um, we also wanted to kind of understand the user base and who we might be targeting. So we started off with family and friends and we just asked people that we knew, um, what's your level of political engagement? And in our circle, it seems like, you know, a fair amount of people are relatively politically engaged um, based on the graph here. But what was interesting, we asked them how many have actually read a bill and we found that the majority of people um, did, never even tried to access a bill uh, or really understood what that meant in some discussions that we had. Um, so we also asked them, last time they voted in a federal election, did they feel as informed as they would have liked to be? And half of them said no. Uh, and 12% didn't actually vote, right? Um, so the last thing we did was ask how likely they might be to use something that makes this process of learning about politics easier and more than half of people um, agreed that it's something that they might check out. Of course, this is family and friends, maybe they're just being nice, who knows. <laughs> um, so we also started a process of customer discovery where we did some interviews with people. So far, I think we've done 31. And we've done a couple of different analyses. What I wanna show you guys briefly is just some cluster analyses of responses that we collected from these interviews um, to try to find some common themes of like, what are the real issues? We think we know what some of them are, but we're not political experts. Um, we don't really know the space that well. So we're trying to do it in a research informed way. So just some of the things that people have talked about here um, are, yeah, so challenges in accessing political information. And we do wanna do a demo. So I'm gonna kind of sum, sum, go through these, but just to reiterate, these are summaries or, or sort of analyses of um, um, response. Yeah, it. respondents gave us answers in their interviews and we're looking at common themes among these 31 people. Um, so challenges accessing accurate political information, uh, political apathy, disengagement, people not being very um, engaged due to apathetic feelings, um, lack of framework for aligning personal values to politics, so sort of not really understanding the method or approach of how to do this, um, dissatisfaction with current political tools, um, lack of knowledge and confidence in political discussions, feeling, uh, this one was interesting, a lot of uh, people reported to us that when political discussions come up, they tend to fall silent because they're a bit nervous to say the wrong thing or feel unqualified. Um, lack of time, a lot of us live very busy lives and don't have a lot of time to do the research that's required, especially how time intensive it may be if you were to look at things like legislation, um, misalignment, um, with political parties, sort of finding it challenging. Um, you know, we talked a little bit here about strategic voting and things like that, or people having a hard time picking party A versus party B because they're sort of somewhere in the middle or they agree with some on one issue and others on a different issue. Um, lack of trust and clarity in political information, limited access to political data, um, disinterest in politics in general, which is a big one. I think we've heard, we hear a lot about this in, in our personal lives. Most people do, I think. 
um, and feeling overwhelmed with the idea of political engagement. It's, it's stressful, it's complicated, how do I do it? Um, information overload, very similar. And then frustrations with first past the posts and the voting system itself, um, just sort of feeling kind of, is my vote really worth it uh, if it's sort of um, strategic voting anyway? Um, so um, that just kind of sums up a little bit of uh, about who we are, um, what we've been learning about from people to try to build the thing we're about to show you. Um, we do have a Canadian version and a US version. We started with Canada and we moved to the US. And given that the US is timely, we're just gonna do the full demo on the US version. And I'll let Mike sort of take over for that for now. Yeah. So just going to um, change our sharing here. Does that work? All right. Are you guys looking at a website that says Vote Informer? Assume the share works as advertised. Um, so just in case anyone wants to uh, look for themselves, you can go to uh, voteinformer.org. It will bring you to this page where you can um, yeah, open up open up the app. It's really designed for mobile, um, but we've kind of sh uh, shoehorned it into, um, into working on desktop as well. Um, so I'll just bring you straight to um, the, the US version here. Um, when you come to the app, uh, you have an option to sign in, uh, which you're uh, welcome to do with your email address. Um, but it's also, I think a lot of people don't necessarily want to share their, their um, uh, political beliefs and preferences. So we do um, give people uh, the ability to share, uh, to use it anonymously. Um, so you can just sign in, sign in anonymously. Um, and you're greeted with uh, actually a bit of a tutorial your first time, uh, but we've skipped that tutorial here since, uh, since I'm here to show, show you guys how it works. So uh, what you're looking at uh, is uh, data from American legislation. So uh, you're looking at something that we've scraped from a bill um, uh, that passed through Congress. Um, and what we've done is uh, split bills into individual policies uh, and then we sort of randomly group them uh, and and present them to you uh, so you can do kind of like a left right swipe yes i agree or no i don't agree on this policy um, so here we have a policy retired officers must meet certain training standards to carry guns uh, you may or may not agree with that uh, we also have um, the ability to show the text uh, as it was in the bill itself. So just to give you a sense of like what you would have to read if you were reading the original document, you'd have, you'd say, you know, some sections being amended to specify standards for qualification of firearms. A lot of people uh, we noticed don't want to read a text like this. They want something much simpler, right? Uh, and then of course, um, there's the issue that, well, this has been pulled uh, from a bill which might have lots of other context. Uh, we do also provide provide that context. So here I've typed on bill context. Again, you can choose that simple language or uh, or language that's more um, uh, close to what's in the actual bill. And then if you really want to, you can click here and it will take you to um, the official uh, uh, Congress, Congress's official website where they host the actual bill and then you can go look at it. Um, now, the point of the app is that you might choose um, to agree with this or not. Um, I'll just, we've also have all these filters. I'll just want to show you, you can also, this slider is filters by the amount of how interesting uh, the, the, the bills may or may not be. So let's say we want to, we're interested in armed forces and national security bills. Uh, then we'll sort and then we'll all, we'll only get things related to the armed forces. So I'll take you through really quickly the, the setup here. Uh, you maybe you agree with this one, so you type yes, and then you see how much you agree with Democrats versus Republicans. I'll just vote randomly. You see this countdown encourages you to get through to the end. Um, I'll vote randomly here and quickly since we're running out of time. Um, 
and you see as you're voting, yes, I agree, or no, I don't agree. At the end, you get, hey, look, here's here's what happened, right? Um, here's the, the parties you agreed with, the parties and how much, uh, how many of the policies you supported actually passed, in this case, 100% of them. Um, and um, But also, yeah, all of the policies we rejected, none of them actually got blocked. Uh, and then finally, if you continue to do this a bunch, you can go to insights, and then we have sort of a more detailed breakdown here. Similar information, you see how many of the policies you voted on versus what we have. Uh, you can go in here and look at, look at, review the policies, see your vote, um, and you and uh, how politicians vote. We also have this measurable thing. Maybe I'll just leave that in case somebody has questions about what that means. Uh, and we also show you uh, which individual politicians you agreed with, you know, by either by raw counts or percentage. Uh, and that brings us to uh, sixteen minutes. So I think we should. <laughs> Uh, Are you talking we, about share? We yeah. Also, um, if you want, if you think, oh, I got some cool results and I want to share it, uh, you tap share. Uh, we generate on the fly uh, a little shareable for you. You can send that to your socials or just download it. Um, maybe I'll just leave this up uh, if people have questions uh, about it. Then we can, uh, yeah, we can answer. Them.